like Zoom meetings are always super exciting the way it is, right? <clears throat> um, let alone having to uh, watch a video of one. All right. Um, so how's everybody doing? <laughs> uh, all right. <clears throat> well, I'll go ahead and get started. Um, so I think uh, we got most of the class, which uh, again, I'm super excited about. Um, so I'm really glad that everybody's able to, to get on here and we can chat about a few things. I can walk through the class because it's going to be a little bit different than what you're typically used to. Um, <clears throat> it's, a, it's a little bit strange because it's a MSU class, but it's it's also taught by Northwestern Michigan College. Um, so we are essentially, uh, think of us as a, a contractor to uh, MSU um, for teaching this class. And <clears throat> a little history of the class, we actually started um, this about five years ago. And at the time, MSU was thinking about trying to, to teach some, some stuff in, with drones, agriculture with, in drones, because drones are... Uh, becoming a big thing in agriculture. And one of the guys was up here, one of the MSU folks were up here, they were actually visiting us. <clears throat> and we've been uh, dealing with teaching drones for the past 10 years, which is actually a long time in drone years. Um, <clears throat> and um, it was it's like, wow, we, we can't duplicate this. I mean, you guys already have the equipment, you've been doing it for quite a few years. So why don't we just partner and we'll just work out it um, a situation where we can get our students or the MSU students up here and and do some training um, and, uh, and that's kind of where it started and uh, it's been pretty successful um, so far actually real successful so far so um, any questions before we get started can everybody hear me okay all that kind of good stuff Tony, I might say I'm, if I leave at 2.30, I guess I gotta go back to work, just so you know. Okay, all right, cool, I appreciate it. Um, I'll try not to have this take forever, because uh, again, I know Zoom meetings aren't exactly the most exciting thing in the world, but um, <clears throat> the other cool thing, let me do this. Um, I'll share a PowerPoint with you guys. I know you're excited. PowerPoints. Everybody see my PowerPoint okay? Looks good. Okay, cool, thank you. All right, <clears throat> um, this is almost more for me than anything else Does it? because it'll kind of guide me through uh, what we gotta talk about to get you guys rolling. Um, so this is the class, UAS Applications in Agriculture. I don't think that's any surprise. Uh, there's me um, with, uh, without my pandemic beard. <clears throat> um, and uh, so that's my name, Tony Sauerbrey. I oversee the, the uh, UAS program here at Northwestern Michigan College. Um, there is my contact info. You can write it down, but also it's on uh, some of the other stuff too. Um, I'm not gonna bore you with the, the big long history, but um, my background is actually in manned aviation, and I came to NMC to actually help run the traditional aviation pilot training that we have here. Well, not too much longer after that, um, we actually started playing around with drones a little bit because that was like the future of aviation. And long story short, we started a couple classes um, that really started to become popular. And uh, I kind of quit my day job, so to speak, and moved over to the unmanned section uh, and, and continued to, to, to make that grow. Um, not, and a little bit more about me, um, not too long after that, uh, me and a couple other guys, we started playing around with make, um, creating a company to use drones for doing inspections in the oil and gas industry, and we got hooked up with Dow Chemical. And so I actually, I left NMC for a while, <clears throat> um, and I actually, this, is, uh, this slide is a little bit of our start. So this is from 10 years ago. Uh, it's pretty crazy. So we had a pretty big class to get started. We used to teach people how to fly remote control airplanes and do all kinds of sort of stuff. Uh, the technology has changed quite a bit. Um, but uh, back to the, my startup company uh, that with a few other guys, uh, it actually took me to Houston, Texas for a while. So I actually left NMC, 
Um, <clears throat> I uh, headed to Houston. Uh, we uh, formed a company, started working a lot in the oil and gas. I uh, got to do some really cool stuff. Uh, this is actually me um, on an oil rig. So they would helicopter us out to uh, different oil platforms. Um, this uh, picture in the middle is one of Exxon's uh, oil rig platforms. We got to uh, get helicoptered out there. And um, don't watch that movie, Deepwater Horizon, before you go out on an oil rig because it will uh, really spooked you out. Um, <clears throat> but no, actually, it was a pretty cool experience. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, did a lot of really neat stuff in the oil and gas industry, using drones for doing um, inspections of all their stacks and um, oil rigs and you name it, wherever you can use a drone. Um, but then uh, actually ended up selling the company a couple of years ago and had a chance to come back to NMC. I love Traverse City and love the, the college, so just decided to uh, come back here. Um, and continue continue the the path forward. So this is a little bit more what we're doing uh, now. We just had our 10 year anniversary. Um, so our fleet has grown by a lot, and and our capabilities have grown by a lot. And um, uh, so it's it's been a pretty incredible ride. Um, all right, so let's dig into the class. Oh, wait a minute. First thing, I know everybody hates this, but um, if we could go around the room, so to speak. Uh, and just uh, a very quick introduction and uh, just why, uh, wh why are you interested in taking the class? I, I like that kind of feedback because that way uh, it helps me tailor the course a little bit more for what you guys are doing and um, to be able to change things to keep it relevant to, to what you're doing. So um, why don't we start um, right at the top of the list. Um, Walters, is it Jamie? Yeah, that's me, Jamie. Okay, let's uh, start with you. Um, okay, so you, I've already told Hello? I think you kind of cut out there a little bit. Incredibly useful, I just, the idea of unmanned aircrafts in agriculture is just fascinating to me. I literally, I needed to add a class and I was like, wow, that looks really cool. So I'm here because it just sounds really cool. Okay. Yep. Uh, yeah. Agriculture is a big, um, a big market where they're really starting to use drones. And you'll hear me say this a few times, uh, drones are not a novelty anymore. They're just kind of a, a, a normal everyday tool that's, that's being used. So uh, definitely worthwhile getting um, ramped up on how all this stuff works and all that kind of good stuff. So, um, and Austin, why, do you, why are you taking the class? Um, I guess I watched your presentation last year at Delta uh, or I think it was last year before COVID anyways, I know that. Uh, it seemed like a fun class and maybe something new that employers are still looking for. Hopefully give me a better start to find a job. Yeah, absolutely. It's a great um, thing to have on the resume. Um, and a lot of our students that have come through here, uh, they, some of them have kind of created their own job. So in other words, you go on to an internship or a job in agriculture, and since this is kind of a new thing, they're all looking to start using drones. So it's like, ooh, you have a drone license, you have drone experience, you know, why don't you help us get that started and you can oversee that program. Um, so that's actually happened quite often uh, with the folks that have come through here. Uh, JP? Yeah, basically, I needed the the credits for my extra credits or whatever you need, and uh, I also needed the. I wanted to learn more about the class to bring more advancement in technology to our farm and become more efficient and more economically. Uh, what do you want to call it? Modern. Yeah, yeah. Even if um, you just use drones for doing some pretty basic stuff like um, you know crop scouting that kind of stuff, it can be really helpful. And you have to have a commercial license to do that. Um, as required by the FAA. So uh, let's see, Adam. Uh, well, I used to have uh, a couple of small drones, like like toy drones, and uh, then I then I um, 
uh, I chose agriculture as my as my major, so I figured bringing both of them together would be be really cool. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, actually, it's amazing how many uh, people have some type of drone experience. Not that you need any for this class, um, but uh, whenever whenever I do meet with people in person, uh, a lot of the class will raise their hand saying, "Yeah, I've got drones already using them," that kind of stuff. So, uh, and Kaylee. Hello, um, so I am in the last semester of my IAT program, and I currently work at a hemp farm that is up and coming in Monroe, uh, Michigan, and they talked about using drones, and I heard about the class from um, a classmate that had taken it uh, maybe two years ago, and okay. seeing how my industry was on the up and up, and drones are on the up and up, Kind of put two and two together and i was like you know this might be something cool to have under my belt um and if i do end up wanting to leave my part of the industry um i can always go somewhere else and be a drone tech so yeah, yeah you, you bet yeah it's not just agriculture um we have folks actually working for like amazon now uh and a bunch of other places uh so just like you mentioned drones are um it's definitely something on uh, that's continuing to grow and more regulations are coming to allow for even more use of, of drones too. So, um, and I think, uh, Cameron. Uh, yeah. So I actually had the internship we have to do for Michigan state. Uh, I was down there and I kind of heard about the class and put it on the back burner. But while I was down there, I kind of hinted at like, Hey, you know, crop scouting is what I was doing. So you could do this a lot more efficient if you had a drone to fly over it and they were kind of interested in that so figured I might as well get it and go back and see if, where go from there yeah absolutely um, yep having that it's a it's a little bit of a pain to get your drone your commercial drone license but once you have it it's something that other people don't have um, so it's uh, it's a huge thing to have that hurdle out of the way um, all right, did I miss anybody? I think I got everybody. Okay, so we'll chat about the class. Um, as I'm sure you're all aware, basically there's two parts to the class. I'm not gonna dig a whole lot into that right now. Um, so we have the first part <clears throat> that focuses on getting, it's all online, uh, it focuses on the knowledge portion to be able to get your commercial drone license. Uh, believe it or not, you can actually get a commercial drone license and have never touched a drone. So what they're worried about is that you know the rules of the road. So you understand airspace. So if you have to go someplace, you know how to check to see if there's a, an airport nearby, uh, you, you know what type of airspace you're in, you know how to stay legal and safe. Um, <clears throat> so it's, it's kind of weird because you don't need a license as a hobbyist. So you can go to Best Buy, buy a drone, fly it around, have fun. But as soon as you do it for a job, some type of furtherance of a business, helping a farm, um, then you actually have to have this commercial license. <clears throat> um, just a couple of things about that license. So if you hear me call it a remote pilot certificate, <clears throat> that's actually the technical name for it. Um, the other thing that gets thrown around is your 107, because uh, it's, it's this part, um, in the regulations, drones fall under part 107 of the federal aviation regulations. So you might hear people say, hey, do you got your 107 done? Um, it just means you got your commercial drone license. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, and then of course, the second part of the class after we're done with all this, uh, so we'll be finishing up uh, later in March uh, with this part, um, get your license. And then the next part would be come, uh, coming up here, um, in May, and I have to confirm those dates, that's what we had. I kind of threw them on there from just from memory. Um, but uh, all of you signed up for that uh, section in May to come on up here for a week. And quite frankly, I'll be honest, that's the more fun part because it's uh, not about book knowledge and regulations. It's actually getting your hands dirty. We'll, we'll go out and fly drones and teach you the basics, but then also how do you use them in agriculture to, to do your job and all that kind of good stuff. So, um, so we'll move on here. Uh, so this very first part, these are the topics that we're going to be uh, digging into. Um, drone regulations, you get to learn about airspace and even how to read an aeronautical chart. Um, how air, 
even how airplanes behave at an airport, so airport operations. The reason why you have to learn that stuff is as a commercial drone operator, you actually might be operating at an airport. You know, maybe you got hired to do a land survey or maybe it's some crops that's right next to an airport. So you, it's important to understand how airplanes behave at an airport so you can stay out of their way. Um, everybody's worried about the big collision thing. <clears throat> Um, a little bit on how to, uh, about weather and how to read weather reports and forecasts. Um, you get to learn about aerodynamics and performance, like basically why things fly, because uh, it makes you a better pilot if you, if you understand what's going on, right? Uh, weight and balance, um, just how that affects an airplane, and, you know, like how you load it and if it's too heavy or it's all, your balance is all goofed up. Um, and then also even like how to work as a crew uh, and communicate better, um, human factors that deals with um, even like your health um, and, and then emergency procedures as well. So those are the, the basic things that uh, we'll, be, we'll be learning. So <clears throat> um, the, uh, a few of you emailed me about this and I know it was a little bit of confusion to begin with. Um, so this online class will not be uh, hosted. I think uh, you guys call it D2L. Um, we have a different name for it here at NMC, but anyway, it's not the MSU online place that you normally would find your class. Um, we go through um, a company called Unmanned Safety Institute. They are our partner and uh, they develop, um, actually they have a long history of developing online courses for traditional manned aviation. So we partnered with them and they created this Unmanned Safety Institute. We partnered with them to help develop online training for drones. Um, so they're, they're kind of like our buddies. Um, and uh, so that's where the portal, portal will be. Um, so I did send an email, uh, if you got it, um, that you would be getting a sign-on, uh, an email from USI with a sign-on, sign-on information to get into the Unmanned Safety Institute site. Um, if you haven't got it or haven't checked your email, uh, go ahead and do that like after we're done. And if you're having any trouble getting that email uh, to get your role in, it's not any big deal. Uh, I, I kind of feel like the, the first couple days of class here is just getting everybody signed in and getting textbooks figured out and all that kind of stuff. So that, those are our first assignments. Um, I'll walk through that a little bit. Uh, let me click on this and see if this works. I might have to change my screen sharing. Sorry, bear with me. Just a second, where did it go? Oh, there it is. Okay. Um, so I just switched my screen. It should be a login at the USI site. Let me know if that's not coming up. I'll put my credentials in. <clears throat> okay, so, and actually let me switch to, uh, mm, 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 actually, uh, yours will look just a little different because you're not the instructor. Boop. Uh, I'll just go ahead and, sorry JP, I'm going to use yours. Um, so it'll look a little bit more like this with all, all the extra junk. Um, so <clears throat> yeah, so when you log in, uh, there are, there's eight different modules that we'll be going through. My camera freaking out. Is that coming through okay? Yeah, sounds the most good from here. Okay. I just, I see my, uh, my face in the upper corner and it's like flickering and stuff. So, um, okay. 
So there are eight different modules of training and we are gonna be going through about one a week. Um, <clears throat> so you would log in and you would start this new module and uh, you can click on module one. Kind of a, a typical online course, which is running a little slow. I probably got so many windows open and doing so many things. Um, I probably really don't need to do this part anyway. Uh, so mine isn't really completely loading. I think my computer's over <laughs> overwhelmed. Um, <clears throat> so, let me back up. <clears throat> um, so you would click on that module and start it, and it's self-explanatory at that point. Uh, it even kind of reads to you, you know, as you go through stuff. Um, so you go through the online part, and then right below it, uh, the very next thing you would do is there's like a little workbook uh, that you would do as well. And at the end of each module, there's a little quiz. Um, and that quiz uh, is due typically uh, every Sunday, like at, by midnight. And then the next week we would start the next module. Um, so that part's pretty straightforward. Uh, let me see. Oh, some other things. So yeah, there's eight modules as we scroll down. We get into, this is a little bit, uh, the very first one is, is actually very easy. You'll be able to do it like in 15 minutes. Um, but it will get more tricky. Uh, so don't wait till uh, Sunday at 11 p.m. to start doing these things. Um, so, uh, the next one, like module two about unmanned aircraft, it starts getting into aerodynamics, which can be a little bit more tricky. Um, and then we get into weather and regulations and operating in the airspace, uh, and then a few of the other ones. Um, the, very, the very last thing is a, uh, it's like a practice test for, your, um, uh, for taking your, your written test. Um, a few other things. Along here on the side, there's one called resources. Let's see if this works. So right up top is the class syllabus. Uh, I can email it to you guys as well, but you can get it right there. It has all the really good, amazing things that we're gonna be talking about. Um, also, I put this in here. This is the textbook that I want you guys to get. Let's see if this works. Uh, I had emailed a little while ago saying, hey, if you wanna pick up this book ahead of time, uh, go ahead and do so. Um, so this book is what we'll be using. And actually, let me do this. Okay, did it just go back to just a full thing of me? Yes. Okay, cool. Uh, so this is the book. It looks backwards. Yeah, cool, so you've got one. <laughs> um, so just a little explanation about the book itself. It's, it's kind of weird, but this book is mostly test questions. So it is mostly the questions that you are going to get on your FAA written test at the end of the course. Um, so you might kind of think like, well, then I just need this book and I'll rip through the practice the questions and I can go take the test. Um, yeah, it's not quite that simple. Um, you, you do need to spend the time to, to learn the material as well. Um, but it's also very good to practice the questions because the feds are very good at asking questions in a way that even if you know the topic quite well, it, you still second guess yourself. So, um, and we'll talk more about this throughout the course, but basically like for a reading assignment, there might be a little section with text. So what I used to do uh, when I was going through this type of stuff is, uh, obviously you're, you're doing your studying, read the seg section, but then go through and practice the questions. And you can almost like you know, cover the answers 
read the question. You can test your knowledge as you go. Because these are, it's basically this. Um, the questions are either exact or extremely similar to this. So there really isn't any reason why you should fail that final FAA written test with the feds. Um, <clears throat> and we'll talk more about the test in just a second, but that's what that book is. And this one comes with it. This one is a supplement to this one. So all it is, in this one, is like maps. Um, it'll just say, in this book, it'll just say like, to answer this question, you need to see figure 12 on page whatever uh, in the other book, and it might be like a map or something like that. Um, so that's all that that's for. Um, and actually this one, when you go to take your FAA written test, they will actually give you a copy of this. Uh, you can't take yours because you could be writing little highlights in there. So they don't allow you to do that. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, but they will give you one of these uh, to borrow uh, when you go take your written test. Um, questions with that? If you guys have any questions, just sh shout them out, do a little raise your hand kind of thing or whatever. Um, um, okay. Uh, the other thing that I want you guys to get, and this part's free. Let me go back here. I know you guys like free. I got too many pages up. Let's see. Sorry, just a second. Um, so I put this link right here so you can, if you haven't already, you can click on it. It goes to Amazon. You can order the book or, you know, wherever you can find it. Um, the other thing is this right here, this next one down, this, this is a PDF. I don't know if it'll pop up right now or not. Yay. Um, so you can download this. Um, it, like if you want to have the file or you can even print it off if you want. Um, but this is the other thing that I'll reference for like, hey, read chapter two uh, about this stuff. Um, so this will be the other thing that uh, we talk about. Um, and it's, it's just right there. Um, so yeah, it's just right up here. So some of these other resources uh, we, we might use as we go through the course, but um, those are just Kind of nice to have ones where the remote pilot test book and this remote pilot uh, study guide, if you will, uh, are the two things that we're going to be using the most. So, um, yeah. Questions with books. Now let's go back to our cool PowerPoint. Let's see. <clears throat> okay, um, so a little bit more about how to, you know, get a passing grade, you know, the important stuff. Um, getting a passing grade and then we'll talk about the FA uh, test as well because it's a little bit different. Um, so to get a passing grade, you have to complete um, all the online content and all the, the quizzes and exams that we have on there. Um, and you have to take and pass your FAA remote pilot written exam. Uh, this test is not given by me. It's given by the feds. <clears throat> um, you actually have to go to an FAA testing center uh, to take it. And I will help you find one. They're all over the state. Actually, they're all over the country um, because every pilot uh, that needs to take an FAA test, they have to go there. Um, so as we get closer to that, I will help you sign up for it and find the one closest to you. Um, so usually they're not too terribly, far, it obviously depends on where you live, um, but usually they're not too terribly far away. Um, you, know, you, you don't have to drive like six hours or anything like that. Um, it does cost 160 bucks to take the test. And unfortunately that is not covered by your course fees. 
uh, we used to just add that 160 bucks into your course fees. That way you didn't have to worry about it. But the FAA changed the way that uh, when you sign up for the test, they require you to basically throw your credit card down at that point um, and, and basically pay for the, the test right there. Um, that is the 160 bucks is 100 percent just an FAA thing. It has nothing to do with NMC or MSU or anything. That that is the federal government. <clears throat> and um, so yeah, that's just what they charge. Uh, if you fail, you have to wait two weeks and you get to pay another 160 bucks. Sometimes I think they made it $160 just to make people serious about taking it because technically you can take it as many times as you want. Um, so if they didn't charge anything for it, people would just go in there and fail their way through it. It's like, yeah, I took it 20 times. So I finally got it. <clears throat> um, uh, the other thing I just want to bring up right now, you will have to bring a government issue photo ID with your correct, uh, not expired and correct address, all that kind of stuff. So something to think about. So in the next few months, if you know your driver's license is expiring or something, cause it kind of stinks to show up to take your test. And it's like, Oh, my driver's license just expired. Um, the other part uh, to get a passing grade, of course, you have to come to Traverse City and participate in the flight training portion of the class. That's this May. Um, so we're not too worried about that at this point. Um, but that is part of the class as well, too. Sometimes it's kind of easy to forget that there's actually two parts to this class. Um, here's some of your grade breakdown. 20% uh, uh, basically just getting online, uh, keeping up with little assignments and completing your modules on time, um, all that kind of good stuff. Almost think of it as like class participation. Um, and 40% will be based off of the quizzes and exams uh, that are online, uh, but it also includes your FAA exam. So after you pass it, you can um, send me your, your test results, like if you got a 99% a on it, right? <clears throat> um, and then the other part is actually coming up here and participating in the, the, uh, the flight training up here in Traverse City. Um, so that's really kind of the makeup of your grade. I showed you this stuff, the book. Oh, um, the class schedule. Let me share something else with you. Um, so this is our syllabus. So off to the left side is basically everything that I've just been talking about, things that you need, all that kind of good stuff. Um, the topics and schedule over here on the right. So I got it break in, uh, broken down into dates, which is it's basically every Sunday. Um, you know, module is due. Uh, so uh, you have to get online, complete the module, complete the quiz, um, and then to keep up with your reading and studying and all that kind of stuff, um, here are the reading assignments. Um, so the remote pilot test prep is this one. The remote pilot study guide is that free PDF that we were just looking at. <clears throat> um, oh, one thing. Uh, so in this book, the remote pilot test prep, if you notice for a reading assignment on this first one, it says pages 5-3 to 5-4. Um, the way that they have page numbers in this thing, it kind of like goes by chapter and page number. So in other words, it's not reading pages like 5 through 13, it's start on page 513. Um, so most of the time it's just like read chapter four, uh, but sometimes it's, uh, I break it down into just certain pages like that. So I hope that's not confusing. I wish they would do it differently. <clears throat> um, <laughs> and the objective would be to have you guys completely done with your test by March 26th. Now, being that uh, I'm kind of flexible on the on the date of actually having your written test done in hand. Uh, and the reason why is um, based on being that you have to schedule it with the FAA and go someplace to take it. Uh, sometimes you're kind of limited to your your schedule or their schedule or whatever. So I think you get what I'm getting at, hopefully. Um, so I'd like to have you have it done by the 26th or at least have it on the books. So it's like, hey, you know what? 
it's March 20th. I got it scheduled for March 30th is the earliest they could get me in. So, okay, we're good. <clears throat> um, and I hope that makes sense. Um, so we just have to be a little flexible on that date. It's not like showing up to class and taking a final. Uh, there's a little more work involved with that. Okay. No questions so far? It's kind of hard to ask questions on a Zoom meeting, isn't it? <clears throat> um, the rest of the syllabus is a little bit of like the boilerplate stuff, like we won't discriminate and all those kinds of good things and don't cheat. <clears throat> um, I think kind of coming to the end here. Oops. Where'd my cursor go. Um, phew, that was a lot of stuff. Oh, the other thing too, um, please watch your emails uh, and please read them carefully. I'll try to keep the emails short because I, I, I'm guilty of that too. It's like whenever you get like an email that's like 12 pages long, it's just like, uh, um, I'll try to keep them short and to the point. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, watch for uh, changes. I will be adding things like some other little videos or some things that will help you out along the way. Um, so keep an eye out for that. Um, and I think that's about it. Phew, questions so far. <clears throat> so again, the very first thing I want you guys to do is just locate your welcome email, get signed in. I can see if you've been signed in or not. Um, try to do it in the next day or two. Um, or if you look and you do not have an email with your account information to get signed in, let me know. I can send you it directly myself and we'll get you all set up because um, that's kind of the beginning part. Uh, and then you can start going through that first module. It's, it's real straightforward. It's, it's real basic. Um, and uh, take your time with it. Um, do the quiz at the end um, and, uh, and we'll keep rolling. Um, I talked a lot, so what kind of questions do you guys have? Um, so for the second part, yeah. when we go up to Trevor City, do we need to have our own drone or will they no. be? Some? Nope, good question. Um, so no drones, you do not have to have a drone, no drone experience required. Um, at that point, you largely just show up um <clears throat> with your license of course um and uh, uh all the drones are ours uh, we teach you if you have one feel free to bring it though uh because sometimes especially if it's new to you and you may be a little uncomfortable with it or you want help setting it up to do something um you're welcome to bring it, your own drones um but you don't have to have one you get to fly all our cool drones <clears throat> thanks mm -hmm. <clears throat> Uh, for those of you that um, chose your own lodging, uh, you probably already have it worked out for, for when you come up in the summertime in May. Um, uh, just make sure you schedule, like if you are going to just grab your own hotel, make sure you schedule it in advance. Although May is, you're still good to go. Uh, Traverse City, as you guys probably already know, uh, it's a little bit of a tourist town. Um, so when it gets nice out, like all the, the hotels get packed. Um, so just make sure you got that. Um, kind of figured out ahead of time. Uh, as far as other Zoom meetings, uh, I'm trying to keep um, this as flexible for you guys as possible. So a lot of times I'll just like post some videos uh, going over a topic or something like that. That way everyone can kind of view it at their own time. Um, but we'll schedule some other times that we can get together kind of for reviews or practice or, you know, if you have questions, um, just get some feedback, that kind of stuff. Um, I'll try to figure out a good time that it works the best for the most people. Um, I sent out that doodle thing. Uh, I don't think I did it right though, because it was like, which day from like eight till four? And it's like, no, I kind of meant it to be like, what hour within that day, but I'll, I'll figure out the technology. <clears throat> um, maybe it'll work a little better next time. But, um, any other questions? So it should be fun. This part is, uh, 
like I said, obviously the flying of the drones is more fun. Um, it is a lot of information when you to get your drone license. Don't be overwhelmed. Um, don't feel like, oh God, what did I get myself into? Um, it's, uh, we'll walk you through it. Um, and quite honestly, being a drone operator, being out there flying drones commercially is actually easier and less intimidating um, than going through a lot of these regulations and, and all this kind of stuff. Um, that might sound a little bit goofy, but uh, at first they, the FAA really kind of dumps a ton on you guys. Um, but uh, after a little bit, you start to digest it all and it's, it's not as intimidating as, as it might seem. So um, yeah, so if you guys, uh, if, uh, you have my contact information, um, feel free to email me, call, text, whatever, uh, whenever, uh, if you guys have questions or problems or anything, so. Uh, anything at all, now that you got me on, on the line? Um, if not, I will uh, turn you guys loose. And like I said, go ahead and try and get yourself logged in and uh, get rolling on that first module. <clears throat> Nothing else? All right. Thanks so much, everybody. And uh, I will be chatting with you soon. Thanks. Thank you.